Justices. Well, I would just like to say that uh, since I've come here, I've been met with the greatest warmth and uh, hospitality by the people of Thailand. So I want to start by thanking the people of Thailand and the government of Thailand for showing us such friendship. I appreciate it very much, and I appreciate the fact that the first foreign trip I've made in 24 years is to our neighboring country, because there are so many ties between Thailand and Burma that we need to develop them in the best way possible. I do not have much more to add to it, just to say thank you. Thank you very much, and I hope that I'll be able to answer your questions satisfactorily. I think we have already the first question here. Can you please pass the microphone very quickly? This one here, and we just read another, qu another one here. Please go ahead. Please say your name as well. Thank you. Good morning. It's Christiane Ulrich from German Press Agency. Um, my question is, wherever you go, there are crowds gathering. Everyone's listening to what you say. Where do you think you can be more effective, as a member of parliament at home or on the world stage? At home. I think charity begins at home. And work begins at home, too. Please, uh, Good morning, Dol Aung San Suu Kyi. I'm uh, Sri Jagaraja from uh, CNBC uh, TV. I want to talk about the international dimension. China is a major investor in your country, continues to be a major investor in your country. How do you reconcile that with China's human rights record, number one, and number two, what's your message to pro-democracy activists and human rights campaigners in a country like Syria? And what would be your message to their government? First of all, China. Uh, a lot of people now are talking about what the position of Burma will be now that we are starting to engage, or rather our government is starting to engage more with the United States and how it will affect our relations with China. I. I'm always very concerned when Burma is seen as a battling ground for the United States and China. It should not be so. It should be an area of harmony for those two big countries because China is our neighbor and we have been good neighbors for many, many years. When Burma was a democratic, uh, gov when Burma had a dem democratic government uh, way back in the 1950s, we were good friends with China, which was then a communist, a, a very fully communist, uh, not in any way diluted by a non-communist economic activities society. Even then, we had very good relations with China. And as I keep saying, we can't move away simply uh, because we don't get on with our neighbors. So it's imperative that we establish good relations with our neighbors. And at the same time, we want to open up our country to others who are interested in our welfare and who are interested in, our, in helping our country to progress. Now, with regard to what I might wish to say to the people of Syria and the, and the government of Syria, I think I would send the same message. Human values are the same everywhere, whether you are one of the people or whether you are somebody in the government. If you remember that each human being has a right to his inborn dignity, then I think we'd all be all right. If both governments and peoples were to recognize and accept this, I think there would be so much less trouble in this world. Please. Thank you. Uh, my name is Bawan Hong from Thai News Agency. Uh, Ms. Suchi, I would like to ask you, how would you connect all these, your struggle all these years to the plight of Burmese overseas workers? And actually, what would be your suggested long-term solution when you say you would bring them home? Thank you. Well, I suggested, uh, it's very simple, isn't it? We've got to make our country a place where they can come home to. Security, that means economic security, and peace, that means political peace. So we've got to improve conditions in our country to make it possible for them to come back. But at the same time, in the, in, in, uh, we've got to make sure that uh, their plight is as is given as much sympathy and consideration as possible while they remain in, in Thailand. I've met many, I met many migrant workers, Burmese migrant workers yesterday and two days ago. The first thing most of them said to me was, we want to go home. 
and I explain to them that this is exactly what I want as well. But in the meantime, we must try to make their conditions here as good as possible, and uh, they must remember that they are guests in this country, and as guests they must behave in a way which would be acceptable to their hosts. And but, of course, not forgetting the fact that they have a right to defend their rights. Amrita Chima, Deutsche Welle Television. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful to see you. It's been 24 very long years. Um, when I see the adulation and the adoration that you get overseas, I'm also worried. We were expecting the president of your country to be here. I thought that would have been a very strong message of what you've described as national reconciliation. How optimistic are you that this process of what you call national commitment and national reconciliation will go ahead? I'm optimistic because uh, my party and I have worked very hard to gain these goals. I s as I said earlier, no hope without endeavor. I think we have the right to be optimistic because we have been very working very, very hard to make our optimism pay off. So I'm optimistic, but cautiously so. Yes. I'm Nasuda from Post Today newspaper in Thailand. A lot of people are questioning the Myanmar's government, uh, the sincerity in impl implementing reforms. I would just like to hear your comment on that. People have asked me about uh, the sincerity of the government. Actually, of course, I cannot really say what they feel in their hearts and minds because I cannot read their hearts or their minds. I think uh, what is important <coughs> is that having said, uh, ha the president and other members of the co uh, government, since they have said that uh, they want recon national reconciliation, that they are committed to the path of genuine reform, I think we all have to work to make sure that they keep their word. Whatever they may have been thinking of when they started talking about reform, when they started committing themselves verbally to reform, we just have to make sure that they are kept firmly on that path. We all have to work towards it. It's uh, not just a national effort, but I think it should be both a regional effort and a global effort as well. Just one, just one, oh. Oh, just one second. Let's we come to you. Uh, Lennox Samuels with Newsweek. You. Um, you mentioned you've chosen chosen Thailand as your first overseas appearance, and you're here at the World Economic Forum. Um, a number of countries, notably the United States, have relaxed economic sanctions against Burma. Um, I'm wondering how you feel about that, one, and two, what would need to happen inside Burma for you to support um, the removal of all economic sanctions? The, I I uh, support uh, the suspension of sanctions because I think this is a way of showing that good behavior will be rewarded. But at the same time, if the good behavior is not continued, then the rewards will be taken away again. And also, I think uh, our people must understand that in the end, we are the ones who must bring out change in our own country. And there should not be over-dependence on what is <coughs> done by the international community. Uh, they say that God helps those who help themselves, and I'm sure that the international community helps those who help themselves too. So we want our people to commit themselves to progress and reconciliation in our country. And as we commit ourselves strongly, I'm sure that we will get the right kind of international support. Nothing su succeeds like success, you know that. <coughs> we will come to this side. Martin Petty from Reuters. You mentioned it's, it's important that you monitor the commitment of the government, in particular the president. Um, were you disappointed to, to find out that he, he decided to postpone his visit so he wouldn't be here at this forum at the same time as you? Is that why he postponed the visit? Oh, Did you tell you so? <laughs> That's not the reason, but were you, were you disappointed I think that he's not here? Uh, I, I can't say I'm really disappointed, because I think the energy minister is going to speak in his, his near state, and as I said earlier, we're in need of an energy policy. So I would be very much interested in what he has to say. I do believe in the sincerity of the, of the president when he speaks of his... Uh, commitment to reform. But of course I also recognize that he's not the only person in government and as I keep uh, repeating there is the military to be reckoned with. 
Andi, yang orang dah ingat ni ada zaman memang jono pemalu mewi biar di pilih lor. Andi English lor pilih biar andi. Permasalahan tu je na andi nasional ni ada memang permasalahan di negara kita itu entah lah lor. Andi ye adui jom ni. Nau dekua andi aku uang ekonomi full ane andi dia abah. Nau dekua andi ni malu dari le andi tuat biar. Nau kat thailand ni ada siul le andi ni lagi ane malu tiga tiga si biar. Dah jom malu andi ni mana ni ama tuat biar. Nau aku dua tu jom ni abah lu pilih biar lembu di lu alia biar lu le ame soal andi temujal lu pilih biar kena. Uh, this is a question about my impressions uh, with regard to the first foreign trip that I've made abroad in 24 years and what I felt on meeting the migrant workers of Burma and in attending the World Economic Forum. Um, well, my impressions are, I think I mentioned this briefly earlier, that uh, the gap between Thailand and Burma has widened. The economic gap has certainly widened over the last 30 years, and we've got to try to narrow this gap, because that is connected to the second question about migrant workers. The reason why there are so many Burmese migrant workers in, in Thailand is precisely because of this gap. If we were able to offer them the job opportunities that they get here, then they would not need to come here. It was very touching uh, to meet our workers and to find out how much they long to go home. So this is something we've got to keep in mind and work towards. Attending the uh, World Economic Forum, it has been very valuable because I've uh, listened to all the, what they call now the shakers and the shapers and the movers and the doers and everybody speaking about how they see the direction in which this region is going or should be going. I've learned a lot. And I believe in the learning process. I keep telling our young people in Burma that I do not make a distinction between intelligent people and unintelligent people, or but, but, uh, between good people and bad people. I only make a distinction between those who are capable of learning and those who are incapable of learning. And I don't mean learning in the strict formal sense of school learning. Can over there um, first. Yeah. Dosu, Gwen Robinson, Financial Times. You mentioned in your uh, uh, talk just then about uh, the lack of a, a, a proper judicial system and you said even the best investment law won't make any difference if you don't have the system and then you mentioned there is no sign that uh, any reform has taken place. Do you feel that's sort of a discouraging signal to send to a forum full of investors who are very interested in um, uh, Myanmar and it might deter um, I understand your concerns about uh, the, the bad forms of investment and you want uh, constructive investment. Um, what do you think is the way forward before, it's going to be years before you have a proper court system? Uh, no, it needn't be years if, if uh, the government is really intent on bringing about reform in, uh, with regard to our judiciary. But you should not look upon this as uh, discouragement. I think you should just see it as a word of caution, but a strong word of caution. Here yeah, first. <laughs> yes. So uh, from InfoQuest agency, local agencies, I would like uh, how, what do you think about the project? You know, the project is uh, a, a Thailand to invest there. I would not like to think, uh, talk about just the Dewey project. I would like to think of all bilateral projects. I would like to talk about how we would wish all bilateral projects to be uh, approached. Transparency is very important. There should be transparency. And this is the message that I would like to send to those who are thinking of investing in Burma. Please make sure that whatever you do is transparent. Not just investments, but aid as well. Development aid, humanitarian aid. Transparency is very important if we are to avoid problems in future. The reason why we have problems with the DeWare project and projects of that nature and other bilateral projects is that we, were, we, the people of Burma, were kept completely in the dark about what was in the contracts, about what was going on, about what was going to happen. Then suddenly uh, something was happening and there was nothing we could do to stop it. Everything was going ahead and people had not had a chance to discuss the situation, to exchange views to come to a consensus. This is very dangerous for a country. It, uh, it endangers national reconciliation. It engenders more and more suspe suspicion and distrust. So whatever investments, uh, multi-governmental uh, uh, agreements, 
whatever aid might be proposed. Please make sure that this is transparent, that the people of Burma are in a position to understand what has been done and how and for whom the benefits are intended. We have to make this quite clear. Otherwise, we may, we may find that the benefits go to one particular group or one particular person even. Ms. Suchi, this is, uh, is it me? Yes, this is your turn. Richard Lloyd Parry of The Times. To what extent do you think the reforms which have taken place in Burma depend on President Thane Sein personally? In other words, if he was out of action for some reason, for reasons of health or for a political reason, what effect would that have? Uh, this is a difficult an question to answer because if you assume that for some reason or the other, President Thien Sein may not be uh, continuing in his present position, then we also have to ask who is going to, be to, to replace him. And unless we know the answer to that question, we cannot tell what the consequences of such a change are going to be. Hi, uh, Dan Tenke with Bloomberg News. Um, I was just wondering if you could elaborate. You, you talked about job creation in your speech. Um, can you just elaborate on which um, industries you would like to see invest in Burma to accomplish that? And can you talk about whether the investment laws on the books now um, help to achieve that? Well, we do not know. I understand that there's an uh, investment law in the, uh, in the works. Now, that is another uh, instance of lack of transparency. We only know the details of the laws once uh, Parliament has approved them and then they become law. But ideally, of course, people should be aware of what is going on before the decision is made and then people can, can uh, protest or support or make suggestions. But I can't answer your question because I don't know the details of this new investment law in the, in the making. Um, wh whether or not uh, these, these laws will help towards reform I cannot answer at the moment. We will go one more on this side and then we will go on that side. One more. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Simon Rockneen filing for Irrawaddy News Magazine and Christian Science Monitor. Um, what will be your priorities in the legislature? What, what particular laws, what particular um, issues are you going to promote in the parliament? And second, related to that, what about the constitution? Um, how do, how do you, you still want to amend the constitution, I take it. So how are you going to about, go about doing that in the foreseeable future? I omitted answering a, a part of your question. Uh, what kind of, I if you don't mind, I think I'll, I'll go back to that question because you asked what kind of uh, industries, what kind of investments I would uh, like to promote. Uh, the, the uh, I have to say that, I, I'm not sure I should say this. I do, I do have some in mind, but if I were to say I, I would uh, support certain kinds of investments, then uh, I might be giving the kind of sickness signals I should not be giving at the moment. But let me say that I'm thinking in terms of low-hanging fruit, because we, we require quick creation of jobs. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I must come back to you now. I, could you just repeat, can you repeat your the question? What are, you, what are your legislative ah, yes. Um, well, the first thing I would like to do is to make sure that we have a parliamentary calendar. I don't know when, we, when the National uh, Assembly is going to convene, and that makes life very difficult for us because we can't uh, arrange our timetable to suit our work. And I think uh, th this is a practical matter. But there is a lot of talk about new laws. And sometimes I think too many new laws are coming out too quickly and especially too quickly without the right transparency so that th these laws are out before we know uh, what are the details. And uh, it's difficult for us to, us to digest them. I would say that there are enough good laws in the country to, to go along with. But what ne we need to do is to remove the unnecessary restrictions. For example, the licensing laws, or well, some are not even laws, but the licensing practices which uh, restrict the activities of uh, our people, uh, which fa quite an obvious one is the license, the requirement for license with regard to the sale of cell phones. This means that we cannot, uh, we, we cannot promote 
the distribution of cell phones as much as we would wish to. And I think all of you agree that cell phones are very important in both the political and economic opening up of any country. Uh, the Constitution will take a little bit more time. I um, don't know whether you're aware of the fact that uh, in accordance with the Constitution, if we want to make any amendments, we require more than 75% of the votes. Now, more than 75%, please note, not 75%. So as 25% of the members of the National uh, Assembly are those nominated by the military, that means that we have to win over all the civilian MPs plus at least one soldier. <laughs> now, th that one is going to be the toughest job of all. We would take two uh, more questions, and then we have to wrap up. Puneet Singh from the BBC. Uh, oh. yes. Can we see you? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Ms. Suchi, you just mentioned about investing in Burma <laughs> and the whole thing about the cell phone licensing and all. Uh, the opportunities in Burma and Myanmar are very well documented, but having attended a lot of sessions at the VEF, there seems to be a concern among industry leaders that though the opportunities are there and the wages are low compared to the other parts in the region, the skill set and infrastructure may not be in place to tap into this op those opportunities and turn them around into actual uh, economic benefit for firms as well as the country. What needs to be done to address that? Does the investment come first? Or do you put in the infrastructure and the skill set first? It'll have to go in tandem. I don't think we can wait for investment to take place before we see to our uh, infrastructure, nor can we do it the other way around. We can't wait for in, in investment to come until we've seen to our infrastructure. It will have to go in tandem. Uh, for example, take my constituency. Of course, I'm trying to promote it as much as possible. Now, the roads, they are very bad. During the monsoon, some of the roads are impassable. Uh, it ca it uh, gets to a point where in some villages, children can't go to school because they have to go to schools in other villages. And as the roads are impossible during the rains, they just sit in their, in their homes during the rains. And of course, that affects their education. So we can't really wait for investment to come before we start on infrastructure. But the infrastructure is in such poor shape that if we're going to wait for everything to be seen to before investment comes in, we will have to wait too long. So we would like the kind of investment which will bring about an in, uh, improvement to our infrastructure, either by making this a condition for the government to meet, such as we'll build something there, we'll start on a project there, but you must make sure that the roads are good. Or uh, perhaps, in some cases, the uh, investors themselves will take part, uh, take, take care of part of the infrastructure building. These will have to go together. Uh, you know how it is. People, people have only uh, a certain number of years in which to live, and they want to see improvements during their lifetimes. It's all right talking about jam today and jam tomorrow, but jam for this generation or jam for the next is, uh, is too much to expect of people. We will take one more, one last question. And unfortunately yes, I'm Ongan from Nation Channel. Uh, Dosuchi, what is your emphasis on the telecommunications and social media of Burma? What and when is the best time for us to add you on Facebook? <laughs> <laughs> I can't answer this question because it's a matter of uh, time availability. I'm not on Facebook but because of, uh, for, for uh, technological reasons, but it's just that I won't be able to fit it in into my timetable at the moment. So as soon as I'm able to fit Facebook in, mind you, you never know what will happen with the technological uh, revolution. Facebook may be old hat tomorrow. In that case, I won't go on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Ong. Thank you.